So at the weekend, I was minding my own business, enjoying the sun that cracked out on Saturday evening. And the biggest dilemma in my life at that moment in time was what to have for dinner. <laughs> my favourite decision. A great thing to and have to worry about. Yeah, exactly. And I decided it was going to be Thai my favourite food so I went up to Camden Street which was just to actually just to feel a bit of the buzz yeah. people were out enjoying themselves and whatnot. and um, my boyfriend went in to collect our order and I was standing outside minding my own business and these group this group of lads came back past and one of them before I even knew it pretty much had his finger in my face saying there's the faggot off the telly and I was stunned to be honest I, I just completely out of the blue and these guys you know not that it's important what age they were but they weren't teenagers you know these are guys who are certainly in their 20s if not approaching a late okay. 20s and you would hope would know better and um, you know I've spent my life brushing off that type of comment and it would have been really easy for me just to kind of go park it and go you know I'm well able to deal with mm. it water off a duck back, duck's back which it is but at the same time I just kind of I'm standing there going I'm a 40 year old man in the middle of Dublin city centre and someone is just after using one of the most violent terms that could be used against me if I'm being brutally honest. And in that moment in time, I kind of shrunk and it brought me back to a time in my life where I felt um, very vulnerable and almost hopeless and shameful. And that's the really big thing, because I had so much shame when I was in my teenage years coming to terms with my own sexuality that in that one word so loaded yeah. and probably meant nothing to that person. Um, he probably didn't even know what it meant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just brought me to this place. And I kind of that's just I had to call it out. It's just not good enough. Hard to believe it's 2021, Darren, and you're you're dealing with this. So, as you say, still dealing with this. Mm. And you know, it's not the first time that it's happened. I mean, over the years, obviously it happens and I just brush it off and ignore it. And I know from uh, lots of other LGBT people, it happens very regularly. And the worrying thing is, Andrea, that, uh, you know, the feedback from this has been phenomenal. And I have to say from everybody across the board. And, you know, so many parents and teachers and, uh, you know, people from all different walks of life saying it's disgusting. But also then the feedback from people within the LGBT community saying, that unfortunately they have noticed a rise in this type of behaviour. And in that's the really it, months or? Yeah, I'd say over the past twelve to eighteen months, you know, and, and one person just said, you know, definitely during the pandemic that has noticed a mark rise okay. I, in this kind of homophobic, everyday casual homophobic slur. Because I would have thought there was kind of a maybe a bit of a common misconception that homophobia that it, it no longer exists. I know it's, it's it very much exists and 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 that's the thing and I think a lot of people a lot of you know the vast majority of people yeah. good people would be right in thinking that because that's how they think but in actual fact you know when you look at marriage equality which was over 6 mm. years ago now massive step forward as we all know but I sometimes feel that it was one step forward two steps back and it's like progress takes you know a long time and whilst legislatively we have come on like a quantum leap mm. in terms of the everyday, not necessarily. And if you look at, and I'm sure teachers would probably be the front line of this, you know, oftentimes the first word that is, you know, first slur in the playground is fag or faggot. And that still persists. And a lot of people who say it have no idea how deeply yeah. that can cut and I think that's the problem so I think it's it's really important that we continue to talk about it and I know great strides have been made there's groups like Belong To who uh, offer you know a safe space for young people they have a new schools programme and they've signed up 20 schools over the past year or so and actually I'm familiar with it because I recently launched their their latest annual report we had uh, the Minister for Equality Roderick O'Gorman uh, speaking keynote speaker and it's fantastic that top levels of government are are behind this yeah. and you even look around it was Pride Month yeah. I mean, the and flags are everywhere. It's very visible. I, I wonder, is, is is that one of the... Is it more common something like this during, you know, coming off the back of, of Pride Month? To, to answer you, I don't know. Yeah, I okay. don't know. But, you know, even a, a very good friend of mine there recently was saying that he got called fag by a group of like 
15 year olds on bikes and he felt and again it's like this whole thing where it transports you back to a really vulnerable yeah, time and you shouldn't have to feel that no one should have to feel that no absolutely I think, not and you know, w- when you were there on, on Camden Street um, on Saturday Darren as you mentioned was there anyone else around you like I just wonder what was the reaction of the, the public or people bystanders in the street when they heard this the street was thriving there was loads of people on the street yeah. I don't think anyone would have noticed okay. because I was kind of standing on my own waiting outside a shop people were dining people were having drinks so no one they were so fleeting that no one would have even noticed and and I was kind of thinking myself what would people have done if they had have heard it and I've no doubt that people would have been appalled like any of your listeners but there was no reaction in that sense I had no reaction I I kind of just smiled you froze froze. a little bit and then I walked off and I forgot about it and I went that's ridiculous and I said a little story and then I I thought about it a a little bit more Mm. and I went this is just wrong you know And I'm someone who's, you know, I've dealt with all the things you have to deal with when you're discovering who you are and I've come out the other side. But I I think, well, A, I shouldn't have to be brought back to that place. No one should. And B, there are still thousands and thousands of young people and not so young Mm. people struggling with their identity. And, um, you know, I even think back to my own parents when I came out. I came out when I was 17. So, and... It was a struggle. It was a hard time for for my parents. And I always think about it like I had taken years to get to that point where I could tell them I am gay and expected them overnight to be fine with it. And obviously that's not the case. People need to process. But I look at how my parents have become and, you know, my dad struggled and my mom struggled and there were struggles, but they've become such allies. And I think as a nation, predominantly speaking, we are allies Mm -hmm. and most people, you know, the referendum proved that, but it's not the end of it. And I think that the important thing is that, you know, the work still needs to be done.